I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anu Pujari from CDR India. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Max Healthcare's Q1 FI 2021 earnings conference call. We have with us Mr. Abhay Soy, Chairman and Managing Director of the company, Mr. Yogesh Sareen, Senior Director and Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Dilip Bidani, Senior Director of Finance, and Mr. Gautam Vadwa, EVP Business Development and Business Intelligence of the company. We will begin the call with opening remarks from the management, following which we'll have the forum open for an interactive question and answer session. Before we start, I would like to point out that some statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the earnings presentation shared with you earlier. I would now like to invite Abai to make his opening remarks. So thank you, Arup, and um, a very warm welcome to everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us on the maiden call of the you know, combined amalgamated uh, Radiant Max and now could we call Max Healthcare going forward. I think clearly the last quarter for us uh, was a defensive quarter uh, due to the uncertainty, but we believe at this stage uh, the worst is behind us and uh, things have progressively improved since April, which was the low point. Uh, month on month, uh, both financially as well as operationally. And we also are uh, better prepared for anything that uh, comes in the way forward. However, the trajectory going forward, I mean, clearly uh, things have been better so far, but let's see uh, how things go going forward. I think other than that, uh, we also launched our new logo. Uh, you know, the, uh, the crisis, uh, we've uh, used it as an opportunity to bring uh, digital to our core. So we are looking at uh, uh, a more technology-oriented enterprise going forward as well. Now I'd uh, leave it to uh, Yogesh Sareen, our uh, CFO, uh, to take you through more specifics. Yeah, thank you, Abhay, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so let me start with the quarter one. Uh, let, let me start with saying that you know quarter one was a challenging, challenging quarter, and this is also reflected in the in the results, as you, as you can see that. So the focus in quarter one was basically on preserving cash, you know, managing the cost, uh, you know, and also ensuring the safety and well-being of our staff. Uh, so the occupancy, as as you would have seen in the presentation, also. During the quarter was uh, you know average of 45 percent. The April was low, 33 percent, and May it progressively went up to 43, and June we closed the quarter with 59 percent occupancy. Currently, the occupancy is hovering around 70, 71 percent. Uh, the COVID occupancy in quarter one was 27 percent. That means 27 percent of the occupied beds were you know from from COVID patients, and then July and it had come down to 24, 25 percent, and currently it is around 30 percent. So that's the occupancy side. Uh, our cost is, is, is at 47,200 rupees, and uh, this, is, this is lower by 5% over quarter one. Uh, now, the surgical medical needs during the quarter has been low. Uh, so, ABC quarter one last year, you know, it was 5644, that means 56 percent of surgical needs and 44 medical. Uh, this quarter, it is the opposite, so it's 38 you know, percent of patients, or 38, 62 is the, is the, is the you know, surgical medical needs for the so medical patients have gone up, uh, mainly due to COVID. Uh, so the gross revenue was 600 and close, uh, which is 42% you know, lower than the corresponding quarter last year. Uh, so the, the, the specialties which are mostly impacted on the revenue side were also uh, minimum extra surgery and, uh, and OPDs. You know, OPDs were down by, uh, they, they were simply 31% of the, you know, the quarter one last year revenues. Uh, the pyramids, uh, on the pyramid side, uh, the revenue from internship patients were low, uh, which come down to 3% uh, as compared to 11% that we used to have, you know, uh, toward the year last year. Uh, the material costs were higher during the, uh, during the quarter. Uh, it was mainly due to the spend on the, on the, on the PPEs and also the relative share of oncology has gone up during the quarter. And, and also we spent some money on the, you know, the pre-testing of staff, etc. So that's gone into material costs. Uh, the indirect costs were lower by 90 crores as compared to quarter four. Uh, now I'm taking the trading quarter here, but we, we know that you, you know that we had some you know cost saving plans, and progressively the cost structure had come down. Uh, so it's 90 crores less than quarter four, uh, and, and a large part of it is personal cost, and then you know balance is the SGA. Uh, and this has some voluntary salary reduction, which range from 10 to 50 percent, you know depending on you know level of the level, level of the person. 
Now, this is only for employees above a certain level, and also this. So there is no employees, you know, salary has been reduced or there, there has been any voluntary cuts uh, for people who have been on the front line of the of the of the you know hospital. Uh, this brings us to Redis really Bidda. Uh, this was a loss of 22 country tours. Uh, you know, this is post India uh, one of it, and if we take it before the India one of it, it was 32 tours loss. Uh, uh, and and this, I mean, obviously, you know, this is this is much. It's it's much lower than what we did in in quarter one. Quarter one profit was 170 crores. Uh, yeah, I mean, in the, in the quarter, you know, we have done the major accounting. So this is uh, we would have explained this on page 11 of the investor presentation. Uh, this merger is a reverse merger, which throws up some unique you know uh, accounting uh, situation. Uh, now the statutory financials of Max Healthcare, whenever we report the statutory financials. Uh, will be three months of radiant hospital results and one month of max healthcare because the there's a reverse measure, so the max hospital results will be included in the in the test results only for one month and three months of radiant. So that's how the measure will be reported. Uh, uh, this measure also throws up some extraordinary I would say one one items. So the biggest one of that is the loss on fair valuation of shares. So the India's one zero three requirement is that when there is a stage merger or stage acquisition, uh, then the, the, the shares held by the by radiant in the phase has to be marked to market and pay valued on the date of acquisition. So which means that the 49.7% holding that radiant had in max culture before the 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 undertaking was demerged into max culture. Uh, so the shares will be shares will have to be again pay valued and that pay valuation gives us a loss of 204 crores, which is one time. And non cash item. Uh, besides that, there's also, you know, we'll be merging now the BLT, the, the radiant hospitals and the anti mass mass hospitals. So basically, in BLT hospitals, there is a, there are institutional revenues and there are, you know, there are receivables on the institutional side. Uh, so we have to align the policies and to that stand, the inclusion for bad and output that is one time again uh, has gone up, has, has been, you know, put it as a, as a policy harmonization line item. Uh, so that's a that's a you know five and four crore line item which is there. It basically represents one time uh, alignment of the of the of the policy on provision for the hotel tax. Uh, there's obviously you know another item which is you know transaction cost which is ten point four crore. Uh, this is mainly the expense on share issues, lawyers, consultants, etc. for all the transaction that is it, uh, which is the merger as a listing. And then there's another line item which is shown in the PNL uh, also, uh, which is the movement in fair value of continuous transition. Uh, this is a 6.44 line item. This is this will be a recurring line item. It's not a one-off line item. This basically represents the movement in the fair value of the contingent consumption that we have to pay to the trust over the balance period of the of the of the owned amendment. So it's basically for BLJ and and none of the trust, uh, the results of which are consolidated in, in the in the in the max healthcare financials. Uh, this basically is only a movement. So the what we pay to trust goes up before the before the opening beta. But this movement is only, you know, I would say, changing the estimates which happen, and it's really not that item. So to that extent, we want to build it on, and 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 not part, of, not make it part of the opening bid. Similarly, there's a modification of contract record. This is also we have to sort the rounding off this with the with the auditors. Uh, but as of now, this is being you know shown below the below the opening bid. But this is again uh, a modification charge, and it doesn't doesn't the uh, it's, it's a non cash item and doesn't present you know, an operating stance. Uh, with that, the profit after tax is 55 crores. Uh, prof, uh, the loss after tax is 55 crores, uh, which includes uh, 227 crores of these one half items that we mentioned. Uh, on the lead to date side, uh, you know, despite the losses, we are not borrowed any further. Our gross debt is the same level as, as earlier, uh, which stands at you know, 1921 crores at the, at the end of the atom quarter. Uh, but this excludes the financial liabilities for the put option. Uh, you know that there are two put options that are against, you know, that are being exercised against us. So this, uh, this the, the values for that are 586 at the end of March. But at the end of June, the value is 568 crores, the remaining value of the option liability. Uh, so that's not included in this in this in this draw that number that I mentioned. Uh, our cash and value balance is intact. We have you know 379 crores of cash and cash incidents at the end of June. Uh, so there is not, so uh, I would say we are we, we are fairly liquid there that way, uh, and and I think that's all from me and my end, my, my end and uh, we are open for today.
Thank you very much. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star and one. The first question is from the line of Prakash Agarwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Mr. Prakash Agarwal from Access Capital, you may go ahead with the question. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Just question on, uh, you know, uh, the occupancy you clearly mentioned and shown in the presentation, it has moved upwards. Uh, just trying to understand uh, how would the mix change uh, uh, have been uh, from, say, Q1, COVID, non-COVID versus the, you know, the, you know, the first two months of uh, you know, August, July and August. So, Prakash, so basically, the, the increase in occupants that we see is, is largely is because of COVID. Uh, but I would say some, uh, quite, quite a bit of surgical work has started already. Uh, so, we don't have the exact, we can't obviously give you the exact you know, uh, proportion of the, of the surgical and medical list. But, uh, of course, surgical list has gone up. Some auto business is back. And, and, and uh, to that, but, but the share of, share of uh, the COVID occupancy has gone up also. So today, you know, uh, as I said, it was 27 percent in July. It's gone up to 30 percent today. But majority still happens to be uh, non-COVID. Okay, so I'm just trying to understand how would the APO move, uh, given the COVID uh, patients, which are relatively lower APO, with my understanding. So. Would our ARPOV continue to improve from what we have seen a low in uh, Q1? So I think clearly uh, Q1 had more uh, uh, COVID than non-COVID. So, you know, you see the ARPOV there. So you can uh, pretty much expect uh, uh, improvement, okay, with the improve, uh, with the increase in uh, non-COVID numbers. So okay. Perhaps, you know, the ARPOV will improve, uh, but it won't be a big improvement. It will not be, a, you know, uh, would be probably 5 to 8% uh, Understood. And the second question is in terms of your financial, you know, statement. So we could not see the line items of, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, the breakup of this clinician payout and staff and others. Uh, would you be able to share it, how it has moved uh, uh, quarter to quarter, wire wire, or you're not disclosing at the moment? So, Prakash, we benchmark the reporting is what others do. So, we found that people are reporting the big data directly. So, I think we want to align that the reporting the, with, with how others report. So, I think going forward, we want to report the numbers like this. Okay. And lastly, on the debt numbers, uh, so in the last presentation, there was a put option uh, number that was given. Would that yeah. still hold good? Uh, and what would be the net debt number as on the June quarter? So I mentioned that uh, because the, the the put option number has come down by 18 crores, uh, so it is 568 crores now. Earlier it was 586 crores. Uh, so that the that the movement in the in the number, and uh, the net debt is that we have dropped that of 1921, and there's a you know 371 of the of that that we have. So that makes the net debt. Uh, you, so no, you can see the slide 23 of the deck. Yeah. So it'll be fifteen fifty net debt. Yeah, thank you so much. We need to add that back, right? I mean, uh, just the, uh, the put option, we need to add that back, right? Yes, 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 yes. 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 But as on earlier, the net debt on balance sheet would be fifteen fifty. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions, please press star and one on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Suchi Srivastava from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Hi, sir, good afternoon. Um, so my question was basically from 
cost savings front now it has been a trend across all companies and sector in uh, june quarter for everyone uh, but we were doing this even before covid and um, i was also reading somewhere that um, you had identified some 200 cost item lines where you could then you took over from the the oil promoter so how much of that is exhausted and how much can we expect going ahead as we explained in our uh, in our uh, earlier call so a i think we need to distinguish between the structural cost saves uh, and the seasonal cost saves or what our reaction to pandemic has been right so the uh, current cost saves in the first quarter majority of them were uh, seasonal cost saves and temporary salary cuts and so on uh, which will uh, you know uh, with normalcy which comes back so i'm not going to confuse that with the structural cost saves uh, the structural cost saves like we had mentioned in our investor call we were looking at uh, about uh, 220 crores last year which we implemented 140 crores of which had got banked uh, 140 to 150 crores had got banked last year and uh, the balance uh, because you know the, we didn't get the benefit of the entire 12 months for the 220 crore so the balance will come into play this year uh, having said that in addition there are about uh, uh, 100 uh, crores of uh, savings and synergies uh, largely synergies uh, based on normalization of business because some of them are revenue linked as well um, and you know we were looking uh, at perhaps uh, banking uh, uh, 40 percent of that in the current year and 60 percent in the next year but this again you know the the, the, the timeline the trajectory of normalcy has to be there right so and my second question is on international patients uh, obviously f21 let's take it as anomaly but from fy20 to f22 f23 onwards what kind of mix would you want to see from that uh, given your earlier in gradient as well your focus was more on uh, international patients i think clearly you know it's a uh, higher value business for us and uh, you know a number which was about 11 percent uh, pre-covid uh, has come down to about three percent uh, in the current uh, dispensation uh, and uh, you know we are obviously looking at increasing it further beyond the 11 percent uh, you know we also have uh, uh, we are also looking to distill the capacity. Uh, you know, 35% of our capacity is uh, uh, what uh, is, is uh, uh, you know uh, is addressing uh, the government business, which is at uh, 40% discount. So slowly, we will be looking at distilling that capacity also. And clearly, I think you know the idea has to move towards international testing, patient insurance, and so on. Thank you, sir. And just one last question on the fundraising. Um, what is this fundraising for? And um, yeah, what exactly are you planning to first get rid of whatever debt you have, or is it for addition of new beds or acquisitions of uh, distressed hospitals? Well, uh, you know, it's uh, like we had conveyed in the previous investor calls as well that uh, going forward we have uh, brownfield expansions that we're looking forward to, but uh, this would only resume. Uh, the expansion plans will resume post normalcy. Uh, while these plans are there, we intend to fund them uh, uh, through equity. And at this stage, uh, what we've done is we've essentially taken an enabling resolution for uh, a QIP. Um, and because you know, it was more to do with the upcoming AGM, which is there towards the end of September. Uh, but uh, yeah, so this is for in the interim, of course, look, uh, the funds will bunch up because we will not be using them entirely to. Uh, uh, to uh, for a brownfield purposes. So in the interim, it will strengthen the balance sheet as well. Then we use internal flows for brownfield. Got it. Thank you, and and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from the line of Gautam Nadia from Old Bridge Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yes, hi. Yeah, hi. I just have two questions. So, first would be the put option. Uh, when is it exercisable? And uh, B would be uh, just future growth in terms of inorganic acquisitions. So, I saw your media interviews where you said you would be open to that. So, just wanted to get a sense of what size of a hospital would we be looking at and B, any location preference? Uh, 
हॅलो हॅलो मेंबर्स ऑफ द मॅनेजमेंट इफ यू कॅन हिअर अस वी कॅन हिअर यू पार्टिसिपेंट्स प्लीज स्टे कनेक्टेड वी सीम टू हॅव लॉस्ट द लाईन फॉर द मॅनेजमेंट प्लीज स्टे कनेक्टेड वाय वी री कनेक्ट द मॅनेजमेंट लाईन Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently holding your lines. We have the line for the management reconnected. Uh, over to you, sir. Yeah, I'm. I uh, apologize about that. Sorry. Uh, okay. So, um, as far as um, you know, acquisitions are concerned, we are not actively looking at anything right now. Uh, you know, going forward, if the pandemic was to throw up some opportunities, I mean, of course, uh, if the value is created, we will look at it on merit. Um, having said that. Um, uh so that is simply that uh, you know that is essentially the way we are uh, looking at things uh, you know having said that uh, you know we moved from two hospitals to 17 hospitals and uh, uh, you know the performance is to show for it so i think the size of the acquisition is not something uh, uh, whether it's a single hospital or a chain or something is not something which uh, uh, really concerns us from that standpoint because i think uh, uh, over the last one year as well as through this pandemic uh, you know the organization is really strengthened So we are expecting that on the question on the on the put option. Uh, so at the end of June, there's a 568 crores put option outstanding, uh, which is in two parts. One is 86 crores, which is for Crossley uh, Crossley NT, uh, which is basically next Vishali, and that 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 represents 18 percent of the balance in the in that in that NT. Uh, that 82 crores, the launch stop date is December 31st. uh so that that will do before december the balance is already the store which is for the next smart or modi modi you know hospital uh so that entity you know the with the this 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 uh, put option has been is basically gear out with the ctr in the sense that they already paid modi and it is uh, it is the state line with ctr and we have to buy it when we are able to raise that 
So we are delaying it because you know we it's on it's on no cost, no loss to us. We are not even paying interest on this. Uh, so we'll try and do it, you know, in the course of the year. But there's no you know fast track in it. Yeah, there's no launch update. There's no launch update. Yeah, there's no launch update. There's no, there's no, there's no launch update. Four four eighty six. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And also of the eighty two that we have paid to Crossway, we have paid uh, you know five more in 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 July. So the balance at end of July will be. Only thirty seven crores. Okay. And there's one more question. So whatever revenue share agreement that we have with BLK and Nanavati, when we book the revenues, it's net of that, right? There's no expense, but it's just net of revenue. Yeah, so in BLK and Nanavati, we we consolidate line by line. The amount which is payable to the trust is considered as expense in the PL. Okay. All right. So all of all of the after the PNL is is into this PNL uh, uh, minus the minus the amount payable to trust. So the minimum amount payable to trust is included in the expenses. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll get back in the question queue. So I have any further questions? No. So just for clarity, say there is no additional uh, thing. So if things remain as they are, there isn't any additional payment other than that. There is no line item needed. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shalin Kumar from UBS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, I, I, you know, just to understand from a COVID perspective, taking a call from near to medium term, um, you know, uh, our occupancy levels were upward of 70% pre-COVID, and then COVID happened. Now, assume let's say COVID continues for let's say two years, right? And uh, so, do you think that COVID, which is which represents like twelve percent of your revenue, and uh, do you think that it can become an add-on, and you may hit an occupancy level of eighty percent, or is it not possible? You know, because COVID again, you know, you you need some kind of segregation, etc. So you probably have to give up COVID thing and then probably focus on your core business. Uh, what? How do you see this scenario play out uh, from near to medium term perspective? So I think it depends on what extent of COVID uh, you are looking at. Look, if you look at COVID, will continue like H one N one date or something else? Then you know it, it becomes part of the business. Uh, but you know it really depends on what uh, level of uh, or what extent of COVID uh, we are looking at. Because you know at some stage uh, uh, even H one N one had initially begun like this, you are able to put iron curtains around it. So it's not as if uh, you have to compromise capacity, so to say. For that, because really medical treatment and uh, uh, the thing is not as if we are using uh, uh, a large amount of other infrastructure. Of course, in the cases of some comorbidities, which are not uh, so significantly high in India, uh, so you know it can be taken in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the stream of things. But uh, you know, again, it depends on the extent of the disease. So also, I would say that you know it depends on the government response to the COVID. Now, today we have uh, almost seventy beds. But only 700 are occupied. So until today, we have we have to see beds empty because of the government mandate. So the COVID capacity is idle. What you see is more or less uh, non-COVID capacity is already uh, uh, back to uh, okay. uh, to the brink. Normalcy. Okay. So, uh, so again, again. So basically, what we are saying that uh, most likely we will we will be back to normalcy or other uh, how like we are. Are we saying that we are almost back to normalcy, uh, or, or is it still some time away? No, no, we are not saying we are back to normalcy. We are clearly not back to normalcy. Uh, what we are saying is that uh, due to government regulations, we had to set aside certain beds for COVID. Right. Those uh, COVID beds are not operating at full capacity. Okay. 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 While the non-COVID beds are. Capacity in terms of percentage utilization are back to pre-COVID levels. Pre-COVID, but obviously the amount of beds available for non-COVID are lesser than uh, what it was previously. Got you, got you, got you. So as and when let's say government lifts off that that kind of a requirement, we expect our non-COVID non-COVID business to further pick up. So that probably absolutely, absolutely. Right, that's that's where it is. Uh, okay, and uh, are they on, on your Cost saving thing. So roughly, we're looking at 300 crores of a of a cost saving to mix up synergy or with the revenue synergy or cost saving. Uh, if let's say the way way you are operating right, the way you are operating right now, and and if I said government uh, lifts up 
uh, this, this restriction on on COVID bed, etc. In next two to three months, do you think FY22 can be an year where we we can see the whole whole utilize whole benefit of this coming in? Can it go on? So, I mean, theoretically, yes. I mean, uh, uh, yeah. So if if 22 is a normal year, you should have the whole thing come through. Yeah. So what so what do you need? I mean, do keep in mind that 140, 150 crores of this is already uh, reflecting in the previous year. Right, right. So, so what, what, what all you need for FI22 to be a normal year? Like, in, uh, <laughs> normalcy of business to pre-COVID. Yes, I mean, uh, occupancy levels are of, of 70 percent plus, plus level, something like that. You need also also uh, also, uh, also, uh, also, uh, also has to be mix of business. So it can't be occupancy levels at uh, pre-COVID levels, but uh, the occupancy is only of medical or only of uh, COVID uh, patients, right? Because then, like you rightly said, you know, uh, you, are you you're going to have uh, um, you know a lower amount of uh, revenue in spite of uh, occupancy being at the same level. Yeah, and, and probably to, uh, the the medical tourism also uh, in teams you need for that. Yeah. Yes, so normalcy of business would assume medical tourism also being normalcy. Got you. Got you. All right, guys. Not as good level, but as normal level. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, uh, that's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sabya Sachi Mukherjee from Centrum PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, congratulations to the team for the stellar listing. Uh, I have uh, two questions. Uh, first, on the uh, fundraising part, uh, you you plan to raise around 1,200 crores to QIP and 50 crores to MCD. Uh, what is the timeline and uh, what is the objective of maybe uh, 70, 50 crores of funds? So, so I think the MCD is a renewal of a, uh, a pre-existing approval of MCD, which was being there from uh, the, uh, you know from uh, the previous year. Uh, so it's really a uh, enabling resolution, okay, which uh, and it's a renewal of a previous uh, approval which uh, the company had. Uh, and secondly, as far as uh, the QIP is concerned, we are only seeking an enabling resolution because of the upcoming AGM up to a level of uh, 1200 crores. Uh, we had um, in our investor call mentioned uh, previously that uh, uh, you know, when we uh, start the brownfield, we will be incurring uh, uh, expenditure for brownfield, and that we will be doing through an equity raise, um, you know, of circa 1,000 crores. So, you know, even the extent and amount is not certain. And timing again, like I said, uh, you know, this is an enabling resolution at this stage. Uh, you know, things have to come back to normalcy, uh, markets have to come back to normalcy. Uh, yeah, also, the other thing is, I think it's all about, about the, you know, this put up to liability that we have. So, this is a renewal of that, so, you know, approval that we take from the board today and that. Okay, okay. And and uh, on, on the same lines, um, I also see uh, an increase in share capital uh, that has been mentioned in this press note. Uh, could you elaborate on, on the thing? So, in order to, uh, you know, do the QIP, uh, we required an increase in the authorized capital. Okay. okay. So, I mean, again, that's the enabling uh, resolution. So, tomorrow, if you were to do a QIP, uh, you would uh, also require to increase the authorized capital. Sure. Uh, my second question is on the operations part, uh, 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 not not something in the near term, but on the uh, medium to long term perspective, probably two to three years, or maybe five years uh, per se. Uh, what is uh, your target uh, uh, bed capacity that you would like to have probably on a four to five years horizon? And what kind of EBITDA margin is sustainable of probably if you can Indicate a bit of our base uh, is, is, is sustainable or, or you are looking at. 
from a four to five years perspective, medium to long term? You know, it's very difficult to uh, uh, you know estimate uh, that over a four to five year period. But over the four to five year period, we certainly see the brownfields coming on stream. Uh, that should give us another thousand beds. Uh, in the midst of it, uh, you know, we would be open to uh, a value creative uh, opportunity. And, uh, you know, that will also, I guess, as we go ahead, uh, we'll change uh, uh, the, both the character and nature of our balance sheet as well as uh, of, uh, um, as well as of uh, the PNL. and uh, And uh, whilst uh, we, our new capacity also downfield is going to come up in the next four to five years, I'd also like to point out that um, 35%, like I mentioned, of our capacity at present is, uh, is, uh, uh, catering to uh, the government business, which is at a 40% discount uh, to our normal uh, hospital rack rates. And, uh, you know, we will use this opportunity over the next four to five years uh, to distill that uh, to the cash and international and insurance uh, business. Uh, whilst we don't believe this uh, entire 35% will come down to zero, but there could be a significant reduction of it. And that will obviously have to be margin, top line and margin, yeah. No, I mean, uh, your uh, BLK hospital clocks around the 18% bank of EBITDA margin. Uh, do you believe the other hospitals will also kind of attain similar margin in the medium to long term? So if you see the Q4 of FY20 numbers, okay, uh, max hospitals are also at a, well, uh, if I just take out the impact of COVID over the last 10 days of that quarter, they were also tracking at a 19% EBITDA margin, one nine. And uh, with the impact of uh, COVID over the last 10 days, I think it was 16.8, I mean, 17% 17 EBITDA margin. So we already there, I'm going to touch steel merit. And this is sustainable, right? Absolutely. Sure. Okay. Last bit, uh, uh, I missed on the... Uh, there is one line item uh, called policy harmonization effect uh, uh, with the doubtful dates of, of the uh, VLK hospital. I, I missed the explanation. Can you see? This doubtful, doubtful date, you say? So there is one line item of policy harmonization effect uh, in the in the. Yeah. So basically, there are there are three or places where the policies were were different between the radiant hospital and mass hospital. So Max Hospital follows a policy of taking an allowance of 3% on the unbilled revenue. There's a policy on some direct fee, actual valuation, you know, and also there's mainly a policy on the closing for doubtful debts. So the closing for doubtful debt policy at Max Healthcare says that, you know, any debt which is more than, any bill which is more than 65 days is provided for. While the practice at, at, at BLJ Hospital, which has the institutional business, you know, where the money comes late, was that they used to provide it after 18 months. So we align the policies, and so there's a one-time impact of aligning the policy, and then that impact has been shown below the below the you know uh, uh, operating bidder, because it's a one one of one-time item. So this is a provision, right? Yes. Has there been any write-offs? Not It's provision for doubtful debts. I mean, it's like a like as a policy, you know. For example, any bill which is uh, you know, even if the money has come on, let's say, 1st of April, but on 3rd of March, if the bill is outstanding and it's more than 55 days, it will be provided for in the, in the financial. Sure, sure. But, thank you. And that's what we applied in, 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 in radiant hospitals also. So there's an impact of the policy which we try to crystallize and visualize. Sure. Got it. Thank you. That's all from me. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from the line of Jigar Shroff from Financial Research. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question. I have two questions. One is uh, pre-COVID, I think we had an occupancy level of about 70%. Uh, so what is the optimum occupancy that uh, we can reach in normal times? That is the first question. And uh, my second question is, you just mentioned that we had a brownfield expansion plan of about 1,000 beds. So could you explain that trajectory in terms of year one, year two, year three, please? Thank you. That's all. 
pre-COVID levels, our occupancy was 73%, while uh, some of our hospitals have been operating at 83-84% uh, consistently in the past as well. Um, the headroom, we believe, is 73% can get up to about 81-82%. What we are looking at is, uh, you know, like you said, like the brownfield. This brownfield is in two places. One is in Mumbai uh, at Nanavati Hospital, it's adjacent to a hospital which is already operating in high capacity. And the second would be uh, at Max Parkade, which is our uh, uh, flagship cluster uh, in South Delhi. And we are looking at uh, setting up a 600 bed capacity in Mumbai, whilst we are looking at uh, setting up a uh, 650 bed infrastructure of which we are looking to fit out the onion to sea beds. The earliest we see this capacity uh, come online is uh, between uh, three to four years. Three to four years? From the date of start, from the date of start of the world. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yash Chain, is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good noon, sir. Can you shed some light on one of your HBU that is Max at home? Uh, in terms of, you like to understand. Any further plans for uh, or existing and ongoing uh, Max at home franchising services? So, uh, uh, you know, Max at Home is an intrinsic business for us. Uh, Max at Home is something, uh, is an extension of our service line, which includes ICUs at home, nursing at home, uh, you know, diagnostics uh, and um, uh, uh, testing, and also uh, providing uh, uh, pharmacy at home. This is a 65 to 70 crore business uh, that we are uh, 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 doing every year. And, you know, again, we need, intend to build this out much further uh, by layering digital onto it, so our reach increases. Uh, this business has been very, very successful uh, during uh, the COVID time. You know, not only have we got extremely good feedback, but we've also served more than uh, 700 uh, patients at home through this. Uh, so during COVID, while you know, uh, uh, people are apprehensive about this, thing, this includes remote monitoring of the patients uh, uh, and so on. Do you see, sir, any new further opportunity after COVID also? Opportunity after COVID? Oh yes. Yes. So even prior to COVID, this was a 65 to 70 crore business. Oh. So what we saw is uh, while the non-COVID uh, business went down, the COVID business kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, substituted for it, and we continue to be doing about now about 90 percent of it, up to 90 percent of those levels, pre-COVID levels. But the churn changed. You know, the business type changed. And an opportunity okay. going forward. Uh, we obviously you know all the time exploring new service lines that can be added. So it could yes. be from uh, you know dental at home to see even chemotherapy at home. That is at home. That is at home. Now, these are things which are being done uh, internationally in some of the places. So we would look to add to service lines sometime in the future. You see, our geographical concentration in uh, uh, Delhi NCR uh, gives us uh, uh, a lot of uh, elbow room to do this business. Fine, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ritesh Rakur from the Pawn India Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, can you explain the 204 crore write off which you have taken in PNL uh, loss on the fair valuation of Radiant Team merger? So, any particular reason in such a short time to take such kind of write off? And is it linked to BLK Nanavati asset? No, 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 nothing to do with that. I think basically what happens is under India's 103 is that we have to fair value the purchase that purchase price. So now when we do the fair value, you have to pay the current multiple. So that is it is as of 1st of June, all right? And so the so the valuer when they get this valuation, the agent had bought the state paid at 80 rupees. So based on the fair valuation principles, they derive the value at 73 rupees. So the 7 rupees we have to put a you know, p and l charge, uh, but that's a non-cash item. I mean, you know that share price today is, you know, more than 100 rupees. So, so I think that's only a charge which has to happen under the India's 103. Okay. 
Yeah, and this is uh, this is for sales. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. With respect to the forty nine percent of the holding that we had. So basically, it's like yeah, it's it's just match holding. Nothing with DLD, nothing with dividend. So basically, okay. We, okay. You know, so with, with the private equity uh, stake you bought out from the private equity. That's right. That's right. So so it is basically since it is a sales acquisition, that means Radiant held forty nine percent, seven percent shares earlier, and then they up their shares by B much in their undertaking. Mm-hmm. So this is the requirement of the in their formula three that when you do a step up acquisition, you have to pay value all the state on the date of the full acquisition. And uh, second, uh, how much uh, net debt level you would be comfortable at? Currently, the net debt is approximately twenty one hundred crores, and with the QIP, assuming in next six months, uh, what level of net debt would we be comfortable given our capex plan and the expansion? So it is not so. So yes, uh, since the net debt is 2100 crores as of as of end of you know June, mm-hmm. uh, and and that number is I would say if I really take the you know normal performance, it is you know around you know 3.7 in terms of multiples, mm-hmm. and also you have to consider the fact that of this, this is 620 crore debt which is not to be serviced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So 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 I would say anything up to three debt to withdraw net debt to withdraw would be covered with us. So, uh, would it be fair to say a large portion of QIP would go for uh, expansion as of now? So, yeah, no, no. So, we are looking only for uh, the brownfield. In the interim, you know, uh, the funds are available and bunched up as you are aware. The brownfield, uh, you know, initially we'll be building the superstructure. Uh, so, we initially we'll use it to retire the debt. Then we use our internal approach. We are very comfortable uh, uh, servicing our pension uh, uh, tax. Uh, with our internal approach. So, I mean, the total uh, net debt level, if you look at it, is still up 1500 crores. If I was to take on board the put options, then we get to 2100 crores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, what what level of unutilized credit limit will we be having today? From yeah. banks and. 120 crores, and we have a cash balance of 71 crores. Okay. Thanks. That's from my. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from the line of Praveen Sahai from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you uh, sir, for taking my question. I have some uh, query related to operational numbers. Uh, last quarter, uh, there is an, uh, a decrease in the ARPOC by a 5% on overall basis. So, is it possible to give a X of a COVID? How much is the realization? So, COVID patients typically they were on top of 28 to 37 B. Now, obviously, I can't really give you impact of, of COVID on this. So, there is an the impact of COVID. But then, you know, it's, it's in a specialty, it's internal medicine. So, internal medicine revenue, medical, medical patients will give you that kind of revenue only. It's basically, the mix which has played in the so the as I mentioned, the list used to be 50 to 48, 52 percent surgical, 48 percent medical. So it is 38, 52. So that is what actually leading to the lower outcome. Okay, and this mix is in, a, in the improvement side now. Yes, that's right. Okay, and the second question related to LOS, uh, there also we had a seen a significant jump of a 26 percent. So major reason is it a COVID present or? Uh, okay. That's okay. right. So I think not only COVID, I think any time that you have medical patients, medical revenue going up, yeah. you find that we are also up. Correct, correct. So it's a majorly that's a medical patient and that's the improving. Yeah. Significantly is the COVID, yeah. And uh, also uh, related to the treatment, like uh, as in the numbers, uh, that's the oncology numbers, even though there is a reduction in the revenue, but the oncology contribution has increased. Uh, so. Uh, is a plan for uh, uh, you know plan treatments like oncology ortho is it uh, improving right now as compared of the last year quarter so it's overall if you see the size of the pie is still lower than where it was last year but these mm-hmm. are more essential services so they are expected to bounce back uh, as they have uh, faster than some of the others like you know uh, uh, let's say cosmetic or orthopedics and so on 
uh, which have a little more, uh, again, uh, you know, uh, uh, space uh, in terms of uh, uh, being able to bounce back. And, uh, you know, we are also seeing, uh, you know, gradually these uh, segments also uh, improving. They have come down to almost zero uh, previously. Okay. So they are more elective in nature uh, mm -hmm. than uh, military oncology and uh, cardiac assessment. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, and uh, is it possible to give uh, like uh, the breakup of a bed you had a given the similar kind, how much of the revenue uh, you are getting in from the NCR and non NCR reason? Revenue from NCR and overall uh, revenue from NCR and uh, non NCR is present in Q1? Uh, can you repeat the question? Yeah, yeah. So uh, basically, the number of uh, beds you had uh, given in the presentation, how uh, in the uh, you know hospital wise, and the NCR and the non uh, out of NCR. So uh, can, is it possible to give on the revenue side as well? Revenue uh, NCR is non. I'll just give you the. What is it? 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. One lastly, sir, on the your expansion plan of a thousand bed of the ground field, uh, can you give indication like these are the mostly on the NCR region? Like I said, six hundred beds are in Mumbai, at uh, adjacent to Nanavati, and uh, uh, three fifty beds will be in Delhi, South Delhi. Uh, okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mayur Gatani from OHM Portfolio EQE Research. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity, sir. I can you throw some more light on this video consultation? Uh, you know, twenty-eight thousand two hundred plus. So, what was it? Uh, you know, pre-COVID, and do you think this is incremental business for us when things become normal? So, uh, you know, the video consult pre-COVID was pretty much zero, which is now fifteen to sixteen percent of our. Uh, uh, total OPD business. Having said that, uh, you know, this is the, uh, the, the consumer behavior, the patient behavior has changed. And while uh, digital, uh, you know, what are the peripheries of the organization? Now, as most sectors and most specifically ours, uh, it comes to the core. Uh, you know, so the pandemic has uh, changed the behavior. We believe uh, that this will permit us to reach out uh, to more and more uh, patients at a more reasonable cost while still being viable. Uh, at the same time, what it does is, it, uh, you know, because uh, primarily we use our OPTs to funnel, um, you know, to funnel uh, uh, patients to our IPD. This also will help us open up uh, some very, uh, uh, you know, essential real estate where we choke up at hospitals. This is at the OPD level. Because, you know, prime real estate in uh, hospitals has OPD and there's always a, and, you know, there's a major, major uh, push towards that. Also, what it does is it helps us in uh, upcountry as well as international business significantly both in terms of uh, pre- and post cuts. So I, I think, you know, uh, the, the fact that we have had to embrace digital, I think, you know, uh, it can really increase our reach. Okay. Okay. The previous question on the split of NCR and non-NCR, in Q1, the non-NCR uh, revenue is about 27 Okay. Thank you for the response. All the best. Thank you very much. We'll take that as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management team for closing comments. Uh, so thank you uh, very much uh, for being on this call. Uh, you know, it's exciting time for us. We've just uh, come to a challenging period, and uh, we hope uh, uh, good things are to come for not only our sector, but other sectors as well. Uh, appreciate your uh, support uh, through the seller listing. Uh, thank you. Stay safe. Thank you very much. On behalf of Max Healthcare Institute Limited, that concludes the conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You will now disconnect your lines.